afternoon, good people, and uh, sorry for the delay. Um, yesterday, the Court of Appeal settled emphatically the recent controversial constitutional amendments, amendment proposals, and processes. This marks the second time our courts have pronounced themselves on this matter. On both occasions, our courts were bold, clear, and unmistakable. Without any doubt, the court brought the voice of Wanjiko to life and called on us to move on to the most pressing needs of our citizens and our nation. The court decision reaffirms that Kenya is a country governed by the rule of law, not the rule of men, where the constitution and the sovereignty of the people are supreme and not the political elite. However, no one has lost and no one has won. It is a win-win for both the people and the constitution. The people have won, the constitution has won, and the rule of law has prevailed. I laud the courage of the judges who have bravely defended the constitution. God bless them. This is therefore a moment of reflection and appreciation. We thank the Almighty God for giving us this unique day to celebrate our progress as a people and as a nation. We celebrate our institutions which have come of age, foremost the judiciary. Our constitution continues to reveal itself anew day after day and the living exp expression of the sovereign will of Kenyans. We rejoice in the timeless spirit of freedom that remains alive in our land. We delight most thankfully in the vigilance and the civic engagement that pervades our country and the commitment by Kenyans of all walks of life to rise and defend their liberty. We may now live our lives and build our nation with the confidence that the brave patriots of our judiciary stand ready, capable, and courageous to secure the promise of our national anthem that justice be our shield and defender. In this spirit, it is time for us, especially the political class, to set down our battle standards and shed our partisan armor and unite in actualizing the aspirations of ordinary citizens. It is time for us to join hands and pursue the priorities of Wananchi with the same urgency, vigor, that, was, that has been dedicated to the BBI. We must make up for all the time lost, resources spent, and opportunities foregone in the knowledge that time is of the essence. For truly, it is never too late to do the right thing. I therefore plead with all leaders to harness the spirit of bipartisanship and direct our minds and energy towards efforts that positively affect the well-being of all our citizens. I strongly urge that our starting point in this endeavor is to apply our best collective efforts, mobilize and commit adequate resources towards the decisive management of the COVID-19 crisis in order to free up the country, return our people to work, and restore our economy to its full flight. We must agree that rolling out a vaccination program to cover the entire nation 
is imperative if our nation is to have any hope of recovering lost time and catching up with a world that is quickly recapturing its rhythm. Nothing can stop us from achieving full, full success if we are all united in purpose and pursue this goal with a resolute momentum, energy, and resources previously earmarked for constitutional change. Together with this, we must urgently retrace, retrace our path to the Big Four agenda, which packaged a comprehensive raft of policy interventions, programs, and projects aimed at creating millions of jobs for our young people, rejuvenating our agriculture and livestock sectors for food security, agro-processing, value addition, and manufacturing, and also securing the health of millions of citizens through the universal health coverage. I have held extensive discussions with legislators, and we have agreed to fast track the long delayed amendments to the NHIF Act in order to unlock the dream of achieving our universal health coverage that was part of our Big Four plan. We have also agreed on a similar initiative to reintroduce amendments to the Housing Act to establish the framework for the actualization of the Housing Fund that is a prerequisite for unlocking the housing program envisaged under the Big Four plan. This will set the stage for the achievement of the housing pillar of the Big Four agenda. The housing plan's twofold promise of making affordable housing available and also creating millions of jobs for young people is the shot of intervention this country needs for this critical moment. We should work with Parliament in its full bipartisan strength to create the legislative framework required to facilitate mobilization of resources necessary to radically transform agricultural production and productivity. This should enable Kenyans to achieve food security and nutrition sufficiency and create a surplus for diversified agro-processing and manufacturing under the industrialization plan. This effort will finally rise to the challenge of moving over 2.5 million families from new, uh, food nutrition poverty and perennial dependency on food relief. Going forward, we shall need to focus on strengthening and recalibrating our economic policy and programs to deal with the most pressing, the most urgent, and the most consequential needs, beginning with a deliberate, thorough, and purposeful reckoning with the chronic problem of youth unemployment. We must figure out a way of enhancing productivity and competitiveness while creating millions of job opportunities as a matter of urgent priority. A related and urgent intervention that will help in this effort will be to reorganize and consolidate financing of micro, small, and medium enterprises to liberate them from the chokehold of Shylocks and an exorbitant interest rate regime that presently stifles the promise of meaningful growth and stalls the possibility of enterprise development and wealth creation. As a nation, we must commit to creating opportunities for every enterprising Kenyan to thrive and make a living. Furthermore, we must strongly commit to collective effort to fashion 
a new future for Kenya based on a new socio-economic and political paradigm. It is time for us to imagine together a new society that gives priority to the greatest number of its citizens. This new society must choose the welfare of the people over that of leaders. It must prefer the realization of empowerment of the masses to the naked pursuit of power sharing among the political elite. And we must pursue the creation of millions of jobs, not the mere sharing of political positions. The nation we envision is focused on success through enterprise, not largesse from patronage, and is committed to fundamental and inclusive economic transformation, not opportunistic coalitions to rig the system against the people. We cannot and must not, in all honesty, embark on a discourse about the future of our nation without the largest owners of that future. The youth, the young people, are and by far the demographic that most the demographic, the demographic most affected by the grave state of affairs in our country. The overwhelming majority of young people suffer the brunt of joblessness. Many have been driven to depression. Many have become victims of drug abuse syndicates. And the vast majority are hostages of burdensome debts. Today, I call on each and every young person in our country to step forward, to stand up to be counted, to summon their energy, talent, knowledge, and expertise, to imagine, fashion, and create a new Kenya. I urge the young people of our nation to refuse to be sidelined, to resist to be marginalized, but to assume their rightful place at the center of national discourse. Your place at the center of the national discourse is your right. Do not wait to be invited. Your future and that of our nation is anchored and premised on your readiness to assume your rightful position. Now henceforth, we must build an alliance of all Kenyans with our young people at the core so that we can tap into our creativity, our talent, and our energy to fashion a new Kenya where success is not based on who you know, but how hard you work. A Kenya where nobody is left behind. As leaders, we must consolidate the beauty of our dreams by believing in the promise of our young people. We must deliberately, purposefully, and meaningfully turn to and keep our focus on listening to the youth and ceding ever greater space for them to express themselves and actualize their aspirations. The issues affecting our young people must be our most important priorities, and they must be at the core of all future-oriented policies and actions. United as brothers and sisters in this great task, with the Almighty God going ahead of us, let us build this, our nation, together. Thank you very much. That is my statement. Uh, I will take 
one or two questions uh, just to make sure that uh, there is sufficient understanding of uh, the statement I have made. Do we have any questions or uh, the statement had sufficient clarity? Thank you very much, uh, good people. Have a good weekend. Asante ni sana.